Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a $200 used gaming PC that was assembled with one purpose, to outperform the current gen consoles. Sure you may not be able to run the newest games at their respective highest settings, but with a build like this you get a 100% customizable experience that can be tailored to suit you, all for less than the price of a used PS4 or Xbox One. So let's take a look at the components. This PC features an FX4300, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and a 2GB GTX 660 Ti graphics card. For testing purposes it's not in a case as we hooked it up to the test bench but it sits happy inside this 28 pound CIT case with a 500 watt power supply the rest of the time. The other prices are as follows. £50 for the CPU and motherboard bundle, £24 for two sticks of DDR3 memory which, although shown as generic, were ballistic sport in store, a 500GB hard drive for £12 and £41 for the 660Ti. The FX is also overclocked to 4.3GHz and although this was achievable on the stock cooler, we opted for the £24 Cryo Rig 1 which is completely optional. So let's see how our console crusher performs. So first up we have The Witcher 3 at 1080p with the medium preset. The game returned an average of 39 frames per second throughout the gameplay period, dropping to 34 at its absolute minimum. Now as you'll notice on screen there was literally no stutter throughout our entirety of the gameplay and the game felt very smooth and responsive throughout. Here we are attacking some ghouls and even here the game didn't drop at all, so Witcher 3 is more than playable. Metro Last Light also ran at Full HD with the higher quality preset to achieve 66 frames per second on average. Again, there really wasn't that much of a drop in the frame rate, only going down to 53 at its worst, even on this most demanding level. GTA 5, next a game that most of you always ask me to test and here again at 1080p with the high settings it performed at 48 frames per second on average, dropping to 39 at its worst. Now GTA 5 ran very very well on this system and I think for the price paid you definitely get a better than console experience as with all of the games that we've tested so far. Overwatch now at 1080p, also on the high preset, ran at 85 frames per second with a minimum of 68. Now I've never played Overwatch on the consoles but I can guarantee you that you are getting a much better experience with the PC than you will on any of the next generation consoles and the game no doubtedly looks better as well. You've also got all of those settings to play with and customise the gameplay experience to suit you. Next up it's Fallout 4, 1080p once again with the higher preset but with God Rays off to enhance that average frame rate which came back at 46. This time we, thought we saw a few more dips down to 32 but at no point did the game drop below playable and I could happily play Fallout 4 on this system all day. Finally we tried out CSGO, another game that you're very likely to play on a system like this and one that you guys asked me to test very often. Here we achieved a massive 149 frames per second, albeit on the high settings and if as some of you suggest you want to play this on the low settings to maximise that frame rate then you can expect a lot higher even when playing online in the most demanding map like Dust 2. The game never dropped below 60 frames per second. So there we have it, a better than console experience for less than the price of a used one. Now obviously there are plenty of options out there to build a used PC from at a similar sort of price but I feel that these components really do work well together and would make you very happy if you want to get into PC gaming. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and as always leave a like if you did, leave a dislike if you didn't, leave me some suggestions down below as to what your ideal $200, £150 PC would be. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and as always I hope to see you all in the next one.